And I'm Gil from the Rich Relationship Refuge. And today we have shifted our way of doing content to being the how-to channel. So if you're here now or if you're going to be joining us later, we are going to be showing you how to communicate. And I kind of want to do something. I want to, um, we're going to show, we have all our little cards to show you the different things that we're doing. But right now is going to be story time. I'm going to give an example of how so over... So I have no idea where this is going, <laughs> y'all. So this Ooh, is new to me. So, so this is all for story time. Kiss me. Mwah. Okay, so we forgot um, to kiss. We always kiss first. Um, I want to give a great example of how communication can make or break a relationship. So I cook, whenever I cook like fried foods, I cook them outside in the garage. I've been doing that for years since we lived in Louisiana. And so I was making some of the meaty mushrooms in the air fryer. And I normally unplug the air fryer and I mean the fryer and cut it off. And so I didn't do that. I forgot. And so Gil came in the next morning and he said, he said, hey, babe. Thank God we didn't burn up last Yo, night. I didn't start with that. No, he didn't. No, he said, hey, babe. He said, we forgot to turn off the fryer. So um, the fryer was on all night and it fried all night and it was smoked and it actually, there was, it, it burnt the oil. And I said, uh-uh, we didn't forget. I forgot. I said, and I'm so sorry. I said, I'm so sorry. He said, no. He said, we forget because I always, at night, I go and check everything. I walk through and I check it. And I just told him, I said, I appreciate the way you included yourself. And to me, that's the example of being the head of the household. That's what leading looks like. That's what being the head looks like. It means, and we said it before, that you're the first to forgive, you're the first to do everything, and you take responsibility. Right. And so I appreciate you taking responsibility for that, but that was really my fault. You know, it's it really wasn't, I wasn't giving it forethought as far as like... And he just looked at me like I was crazy when yeah, I said Yeah, I mean, especially when you practice a certain type of communication over time, it becomes your habit. And that's what we really always talk about New habits, because even in that scenario, I, at night before we go to bed, I always just go and check doors, windows, locks, everything, and all that good stuff, just to make sure everything is good to go. And I forgot to um, just go in and check the fire, because I normally know when she is frying or cooking or anything like that, not because she will forget, but just to make sure it's done. Because guess what? When your house is burning down, you're not thinking about who fault it was. Right. You're just thinking about how did this happen or getting everybody out safely and all that kind of stuff. And and if that's something that you can prevent, why not just do it? And why do you have to either take credit for it or point fingers at it just to say something happened? But in that scenario, thankfully, it was just smoke and things like that. Just a little bit of smoke. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't anything terrible but except the smell y'all yeah like, and that's still, a... my car still smell like the garage still smell <laughs> like so let me give you an example of what that looks like if it would have been done the wrong way so today we're talking about communication and if you were with us last week we were actually talking about your communication styles Style. so you can go back and take a look at that video we talked about why is your communication style so important is because we tend to communicate in our style to other people and that can become a obstacle or a problem if you are communicating wrong or if you find yourself going over and over, same things over and over again because it seems like the message is not getting across. Maybe it's your style. Yeah. So this is kind of like a part two. So now that you know your communication style. style. Now we're going to explain to you. First of all, communication is two parts. It's active listening and assertive speech. So active listening first. When you think about active listening, it's not just you hearing the words that are coming out of a person's mouth and, and, and those types of things. Active listening is basically listening to understand the other person, where they're coming from about a scenario or situation or what they're trying to communicate and not necessarily thinking about some of your responses or what you want to say when they finish their statement, you know, so when it comes to active listening, flip it over, we're talking about active listening. When we're talking about active listening, 
Listening to understand is the key. So remember that listening to understand. So let's give an example. More than a response. So when you came to when you okay, so let's use that scenario. Okay. About the leaving the fire. Okay. You came in, you said, "Hey, babe." So then that was you letting me know you needed my attention. Right. And you begin to talk. Yeah, and I basically said last night when you were frying, we left the fryer on. Yes. It wasn't a conflict, but what I was communicating is a uh, a, a method or a a my understanding of a ops or a situation that happened that I wanted her to be aware of that I was going to take my part in it, but she was also going to take part in it. Yeah, but you and so so when he I'm listening to what he's saying, and then I use assertive speech. No, babe, that wasn't your fault. That was my fault. I left it on. I appreciate you accepting responsibility, but it was really my fault. And I am so sorry that I did that. Right. And the active listening side of it, again, it goes back and forth just like tennis. So you're going from active listening to assertive speech back and forth in a normal conversation. So in this scenario, I heard what she said as far as when she was taking ownership of leaving the oil on, but... I also understand that part, but it's also my responsibility to make sure she understands that it's us. It's not just me. Yeah. And the thing that I love about um, our relationship, and I, I did a video on Friday. I went live on TikTok and I was talking about the thing that has been our saving grace. The thing has, that has been, well, Jesus, and then us having good communication. And so you can have Jesus, and if you don't have good communication... In your relationships, you are going to struggle. And so that's an example of act. So communication is active listening. Yeah. yeah. Active listening and a and, I, and I love what Brian just put down there. Yeah. It, and when situations happen, you can go back. I could come in and point at fingers mm -hmm. and said, that's yeah, what I was saying. Give yeah, yeah, babe. You know what? You left the fryer on. Well, let's and you an could example. have killed us last night because the house could have burned down and, and and we would have been dead because you were irresponsible and leaving the fryer on. You should have thought about that. I could have came up with a bunch of different scenarios about why it was her responsibility. I want to give an example of how it could have gone the wrong way. Hey, I went out there and the fire was on all night long. You left it on. You could have burnt the house down. So that's also an example of not only active, something else that we don't sometimes think about in our, in our conversation is our volume and our tone. His tone, when he came in and said, hey, babe, I, I the, the we left the, we, 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 he didn't say I, he said we left the, the fryer on last night. His tone and his volume automatically disarmed me. But just imagine if he would have came and said, yo, I went out there and the, the fire was on all last night and there was smoke everywhere and you could have burnt the house down and you're so irresponsible and, you know, this is not the first time you did this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so your tone and your volume have a lot to do with your communication. And those are the kind of things that has no one has ever taught us because, you know, we have couples and they will say, oh, I'm just passionate and I talk loud. Well, when it comes to healthy communication, we're talking about communication for longevity, tone and volume play a big part in how the person is going to receive what you say. I think about even scenarios where we work with couples and even I, I think about us. Let's just take it back to us. us. When we first got married, I remember a scenario where something happened. And you were just going off on me about something. Oh, you mean the first time you didn't show up for the date? That was a weird date. When I cussed him out? Yeah. When we were dating, Gil was supposed See, to... See, I was trying to keep it tactful. But... It's okay. Let's just be transparent. Let's just be vulnerable. Yeah. Let's just be hot, honest, open, and transparent. When we were dating, um, we told this story before. We were dating, and basically, Gil was supposed to pick me up. He didn't come, and I cussed him out. I went off on him. My tone, my her tone volume. Was, her tone was very... Look, ugly first but and then the volume was very loud if you come from a household my mom did not scream and yell and holler and that kind of stuff so I think about it. when you were growing up if you come from a household where even when there's conflict 
it's a normal volume that people are speaking at. And they have may have a disagreement, but nobody's yelling and calling anybody out their names or screaming and that kind of stuff. So now let's accelerate to when you become a, a young adult or an adult in your in your normal life. And all of a sudden you're in a relationship with somebody who's Volume seems to always go up when they're upset. They're always on ten. Or their tone is not very, very loving. Very rough. It's not very loving and forgiving to where you think about. Wait a minute. My mom, my dad, or whomever didn't talk to me that way. Why are you talking to me that way? And next thing you know, guess what? That's going to do. That's going to cause another conflict to to the relationship because. You're not accustomed to this type of behavior when it comes to volume, volume and tone. So now you got a conflict with the volume and tone, not about the fire being the, the fryer being left on and the smoke in the house. Now you have another obstacle. So now you just added two more items to the discussion that has nothing to do with the fire being left on. Right. So if that's something that you find that happens in your relationship where the volume and tone become a factor where you can't even hear or even understand what the person is trying to say because the volume and tone is out of the, out of place, then guess what? It's going to cause a conflict. Yeah. So, so far we've explained that communication is two parts. It's active listening and assertive speech. Upside down. Uh, assertive <laughs> speech. And you have to be very mindful of your tone and your volume. We're going to go into another part of communication that I think sometimes communication has four parts. It is verbal, nonverbal, visual, and what's the other part? And written. Oh, okay. And so, so many times we don't realize, even because we live in a text society. Have you ever gotten a text message from somebody and it was like, how do you know that's what that person was saying? It's like, call me later. Have you ever read a text message and you added your own tone and volume to a text message? Or you interpreted it, a tone and a volume to somebody's text message. You ever read somebody read a message and all of a sudden they add the, the drama to it? What well, she said and he said and next thing you know the neck is moving and the <laughs> attitude is coming through. I don't know how you get that through just words like I'm going to be late or something that you could just look at some of your own text messages and see... Have you ever added an attitude to somebody's message? And, and sometimes it has nothing to do with the message. It has everything to do with the condition <laughs> Babe, of your Babe, I just said heart. I'm going to be late. I'm just getting gas. Right. What you mean you getting gas? <laughs> and so you have to be careful and be <laughs> mindful of that. And so when we think about communication, we think about the verbals and the nonverbals. One of the things that I think that we don't think about, um, Gil always says he's always happy to come home. And... I try to make sure that my nonverbals are welcoming to him. I was talking to um, someone today and I was saying, I am the same woman to, when I was dating, I'm the, I was the same girl to all the guys I dated. However, they were not mindful or they didn't, they were not, they didn't accept who I was. I've always been kind and loving and gentle, and that's who I am. But sometimes who you are is not received well, because sometimes it could be the other person, their interpretation, and sometimes it could be your nonverbals. These are nonverbals that send a message to the other person that you don't, like if you came in the house. And, is this a nonverbal? And if he walked in the house and I didn't, when he walks in the house, I stop what I'm doing. We always, yeah, that's our habit. I give him my eye contact. We kiss each other. Versus he walks in the house so, and I'm doing this. Or, or on the couch. And there are going to be times where you're busy and you got things that you can't stop. But on the but vast majority of the times, we will stop and acknowledge each other yeah. when we first see because, each other. Because your nonverbals. Says a be, lot. It can send a real big message to people. And so communication is so many aspects and there's so many parts of it that we were never taught. Has anyone in the chat, let us know now or while you're watching now, has anyone ever taught you these elements of communication and did you understand it to this degree? Because this could be the reason why we're struggling in our relationships because so many of us, 
were not taught about tone and volume. We weren't taught about nonverbal. We weren't taught that communication is written and that it's visual. Um, and that, you know, and so there's it's so many facets of it. And so we want to make sure that we give you, let's get some examples of a visual that will be communicating something. And, and this right here, this is a good visual of what combativeness looks like. It's really hard when you're having, when you're trying to communicate to someone and they're checked out. We want to make sure that when we tell our couples, when you're having a difficulty or a conflict you're trying to resolve, the most important thing to do is to be close. You see? And touch each other and be giving the person eye contact. And I would even say this, even when you're going through a conflict and it can be difficult and it can be challenging to stop, even you ain't gotta be lovey-dovey or anything mm -mm. but that, even but if you just, just as, as much as just holding hands because regardless of- It does of have what, to your brain. Yeah, regardless of what you may be going through, when you stop and you touch each other and say, you know what, it's a reminder that we are in this together. And no obstacle, no problem should be something that's going to tear us apart. Now, granted, you're going to have situations that you ain't going to be feel like touching each other. It could be something that's very heavy and very serious. We understand that part. But at least turn towards each other. And face and give each other the attention and that you need. And you want need. to, by the end of the conversation, get to the point where you can touch. But you want to always make sure that whenever you're communicating, because your visuals and your nonverbals and what you write and all of those things play a part in your communication. And I know for me, my love language is words of affirmation. And so hearing Gil say, we have a, that was very affirming for me. It, it made me feel seen. It made me feel heard. It, he, he didn't lead with you did this. He led with, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. And your, like again, your volume and your tone was very, very affirming. It was very encouraging. And so I think that sometimes it, when we don't, how, how do you do it? How do you practice this? What does this look like in day-to-day -day life? And that's why we want to show you what communication looks like. One of the things um, I know for me, because I, if you notice, whenever Gil was talking, I'm always looking at him. It, a part of that is because I like to look at him and I like to hear him talk. But another part of that is I know that his love language is quality time. And so I want to always make sure that when he's speaking, that I'm giving him my undivided attention. And I want to go back for a second to Renee talking about hers of uh, words of affirmation. When she was talking about that, the first thing I had to think about was it was difficult for me in the beginning of our relationship once we learned it because it's not my normal nature to be constantly affirming, and I won't say constantly, to be affirming her about sometimes what you may think is not a big deal. You know, like uh, every night, every for example, every time Renee cooks dinner or cook anything for me, I always say, thanks, babe, I appreciate you cooking. Yeah, and he always asks me when I'm cooking, hey, babe, is there anything I can do to help you? And, when I, and the reason why I do that is because it's a reminder for me that one, I'm acknowledging something that she's doing for me, but also that I appreciate it because I do, you know, because if I've been at work all day, it's easier to go through a drive through or something like that. But she cares enough about us, not just me to say, you know what, I'm going to cook something that's going to be a little bit healthier, a little bit um, that's more beneficial for us. So therefore, she's going to cook. And sometimes I do and cook. And I like to cook. I know we have this whole generation of women who don't like to cook. I am not one of those women. And I know that most people would say it's because of my age. No, it's because of the way I'm bent. I am very picky about food. So therefore, I want it prepared a certain way. And there's things that I don't eat. We're vegan and I'm gluten free. And so it just makes it easier for me to prepare our meals. Yeah, so when she's uh, doing those things... It's not just an affirmation like, hey, babe, you're awesome. You're, you're, you're incredible. You can have affirming words even in situations and circumstances that you're going through, just like something like that. It may sound like a compliment or it may sound like a just saying thank you for something. But guess what? That's still affirming something that someone is doing for you. So when she does that, I just let her know that I appreciate it because I do. 
So mm -hmm. if it becomes your habit, just to acknowledge sometimes the small things, you're going to find that it's going to pay huge dividends later when you're going through difficulties and conflicts and situations that are going to take some serious discussion. So we use a positive example. I'm going to use a negative example. So when we were moving here, um, we had a situation where there was something I communicated to Gil that I needed. And this is where our differences come in. When he said it's not a big deal. A lot of times in relationships, the problem is that you're never going to be alike. No matter how long you're together, you're going to always, I'm going to always be extroverted. I'm going to always be a direct communicator. Um, it's just certain things about me. I'm, that's just the way I'm wired. And I'm going to be a thinker, which is my communication style. And one thing that I'll just tell you, because she wasn't going to, she probably wasn't going to bring up the whole scenario because I think, and even the feedback we get and people realize real scenarios help reinforce the things that we're talking yeah. about. How do you apply this? So what happened was we were moving here back to Texas and we were packing the truck, the moving truck, because we moved our stuff ourselves and things like that. So when you have a household to move, anybody who's done it. If you, you've ever moved before, put it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, thumbs up or something that you're going to have to prioritize when you only have so much space and a whole lot of stuff that you're going to have to decide what makes the makes the trip and what don't, you know, sometimes. Um, so anyway, so we were, I was packing the truck and I had been doing this for like a day and a half and you know, you get tired and that happens. Mm -hmm. And this, this affects your communication. This affects your communication style, but also some of the things we're talking about, your tone and your nonverbals and all those things. So I'm packing the truck and I was getting near the end and there was a patio set that we had around our pool back at our old home that um, Renee said she wanted to take with us. Yes. I'm looking at this truck and y'all, I don't see it. And it's, it's not just one or two pieces, it's not like a fold up chair. We're yeah. talking about nice patio furniture, couch, love seat, big easy chair. It was like chair. a sectional you know, umbrellas and things like that. And I'm looking and I'm like, and so when she said that, she said it to me more than once. I, you know, I want to, I want the uh, patio set. And I'm thinking about it and I was like, yeah, okay, I got you. And I'm making a mental note, even as I'm packing the truck. So we, I get near the end and it's obvious that this stuff is not going to make it on the truck. And she still sees it sitting out on the patio, but she sees the room in the truck and she's like, I, I wanted my patio set. And I said, I'll just buy you another one. You know, don't worry about it. It ain't going to make it. But I said, no, I think the actual word that I said is, it ain't going to make it. So this is something that she really cared about. It was the tone. It wasn't the volume. Because Gil always has the same tone. Let me say that about Gil. Yeah, so. His it, tone, our tone, for both of us, our tone, we have mastered tone and volume. If I have to say something we've mastered, we have mastered tone and volume because my love language is words of affirmation and Gil is just a very calm person. So even when we're like livid, you would never know we're livid because we have mastered tone. Not that we're suppressing, not that we're being fake. There are certain things that are just going to be your growth area and your strength. Some couples will have a very easy time with tone and volume, but they may have a problem with... Um, Nonverbals. So I probably had some nonverbals because I was in the truck when she said that. You know what you would probably do? Oh my God. You know, like this thing. It ain't going to make it. And if she can see me when I say something like that, what do you think is going to happen, ladies? Are you going to be like, oh, hold up? You know, yeah, you probably are going to be like, no, this is going to, no, we need to talk about this. You better start pulling something off that truck because now. That patio set is going. Now it's done turned into a conflict. But she said that, and she just turned around. When I said it ain't going to make it, she just turned around and walked in the house. Didn't say another word. And I didn't think it, anything about it. So guess what? I'm just like, yes. I'm just packing the truck. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I could see the end and stuff like that. I was like, babe, we'll donate it. We'll give it away. I, I'm thinking because I said, I'm just, we'll just buy you a new one, that we're good. Guess what, y'all? We wasn't good. And I heard about it after the fact. And this is something... And another that, thing that's a part of communication is setting a time. Yep. I didn't make a card for that. Sometimes 
in the heat of the situation is not the time to try to communicate. Because if I know that I am upset, that is not the time for me to decide I'm going to talk to Gil because I realize that I need to reconcile in my heart what's going on with me. I, it's not his job to control my temper and my temperament. It's mine. So I just knew that at that time, that was not the time to bring that up. Because guess what? If we're on a strict timeline. We're in Alabama packing a moving truck to move to Texas, and we got maybe four days to do it. And I'm still packing and that kind of thing. So sometimes it's better to say, you know what? Let's share this or let's let's push this to the end. Even though that didn't happen right there, I didn't know it was happening, y'all, but it was happening that we were going to talk about this later. Yeah. So, but what she did was she just went about going back to doing what she was doing because we had a task that we had to complete. And I, also, couldn't, I couldn't let my feelings control me. But, and I also think it was really good because it gave her the opportunity to really think about what is it that I said or how I responded that made her upset. Now, granted, y'all, I was unaware that this was going on. So I'm just pack, packing my moving truck. I'm just on my little la, 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 just packing a truck. I'm just trying to get my task done. I'm, unbeknownst to me that we getting ready to have a discussion afterwards, which I was not prepared, y'all. But anyway, go ahead. So at the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And I become I didn't in, say nothing that day. In, in, no. And so... I wait till we got here. We Was it here? I thought it was at the hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got back No, home. no. So we have finished packing the truck. Yes. And we were at the hotel because obviously all our stuff is on the truck. So we're sitting at the hotel, you know, and and she started the conversation. When you hear this, guys and ladies, we got to talk. I didn't say that. Well, that's what I heard. Yeah. I, and see, we never, that's a, that's the, that is that's the a wrong thing to say. I normally start off with, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. I have a problem. It wasn't about the furniture. It was about... I gave up so much. There was so much I let go of that the one thing I asked you, could I have or could I keep, you didn't take into consideration what I'd already given up. And that made me feel like what I needed was not important. Right. And, 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 and Gil's response was... And when she said that, and you know what, I, I instantly thought about the situation and one of the nonverbals that I did was, you know what, you know, I acknowledged it in, evidently in my visuals because I mm -hmm. stopped and I looked at her and I let her say, you know what, say her piece. And then I started thinking about it. And he dropped his head and I, I automatically knew that he felt what I, and I think sometimes we have to not be afraid to show when we're wrong we have to not be afraid to show when we're upset, when we're disappointed. We need to make sure that in our relationship, that this is the one place where I can be. I can tell you that, you know, that made me feel bad because it made me feel unseen versus oh, unheard, right? acting, acting it out. Because we always say, whatever you don't talk out, you're going to act it out. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that in our relationship, we give room for each other to be totally transparent and vulnerable. And I said, so you know what? I said, babe, I, I, I apologize. Please forgive me. I, I, that was not my intention. And I, and I never want to dismiss what she has to say and just like blow it off. I don't care if it's a patio set furniture or even the move that we decided to make or even another major thing, because if you can't come to an understanding with each other in small things, you can forget about big decisions that you're going to have to make. So when she said that, I said, you know what? You know what? I blew it. I missed that. Yeah. That That's on me. I apologize. Please forgive me. That was not my intention to communicate that her feelings. It wasn't about the patio set. Right. It was that I dismissed what she said, something that was important to her. It just happened to be in the form of a patio set right. that I said, you know what? I missed that. I apologize. I I. I I will do better. And I will buy you a new one. Well, she, you see, she got that part. She still is. And I will buy you a new one. So <laughs> to me, I realized for me, you know, we're talking about the five love languages. You know, Gary Chapman just wrote a new book. It's called The uh, Five Apology, Apology Styles. For me, the greatest form of an apology is changed behavior. Telling mm -hmm. me you sorry, you sorry, you sorry, you keep doing the same thing. To me, that is not your sorry. Right. 
apology to me is like with repentance. You turn away from the thing that you did that hurt me. And so I don't know what all of those languages are. I'm, I haven't read the book yet, but I think that would be something that would be good for you to kind of look at. But you need to know for yourself what makes you feel like someone when they say what is or what the, is an acceptable apology for you? Something like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah, no, that's dismissive. That's not an apology, y'all. No, that's not. <laughs> but anyway, so go back right quick, you know, that so when she said that, so guess what? I have now in the forefront of my mind to say, you know what, when she <clears throat> excuse me, comes to me and brings up a concern of hers, guess what I'm gonna go back to? I'm gonna go back to Pat uh patio furniture mm -hmm. and say, uh oh. We're not going to repeat the same thing we did before. Yes, you We're have gonna, that reference. Yeah, I have an experience Yes. To, to go along with the situation. If you don't learn from your experiences from past disagreements and past conflicts with your significant other, you're doing yourself a disservice because right, those are all if you've studies. gotten through it, you have your own case study to mm -hmm. say, you know what? I missed that. This is how I'm going to get past it this time. You got and then the you answer. can talk about it. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, I realize that, you know, when we're busy and it's a lot going on that I have to make sure that I don't give you too much because it's my part too. I have to make sure I'm not, I know Gil doesn't do well with a whole lot of moving parts. So I can't give him something that I need in the midst of things happening. I need to make sure long before we get to the truck that I communicate mm -hmm. what it is that I need. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Renee, I like what you said there. Humble, sincere, heartfelt posture is necessary. And absolutely, you yeah. know, and, and that's the kind of scenario that we just talked about as far as even when she brought it to my attention, because when she does, and even when your significant other, your partner, your husband, wife, brings something to your attention, it's our responsibility as the receiver to listen, to, <laughs> to active listen, to actively, looking? to actively listen, not listening. And this is the difference between active listening and interpreting. So when I'm bringing it to her attention, I'm saying she's bringing something to my attention. And I say, babe, I hear you. What you said, and, and I paraphrase it back to her and saying, you know what? I hear that I dismiss what you said when it came to the patio furniture. You know, I just totally blew it off. I didn't think of that it was that important. While I'm looking at patio furniture, guys, we look at the actual physical thing that we're talking about. She was talking about how she felt. Right. And if you mix up the messages, she's talking about how she feels, and I'm focused on the patio furniture, you're missing it. Yeah, because active listening is listening to understand, mm -hmm. not to tell me that how I feel is not important. So in this scenario, guess what? I'm, if I'm listening to understand, I'm not going to talk about the patio furniture. Yes. I instantly knew she was talking about the dismissive attitude that I had about what she said. So that was because I listened to her and I understood where she was coming from and acknowledged it because I flipped back to the assertive speech. I used assertive she speech. She used assertive speech to tell me what the problem was. And I actually use assertive speech to even go back to her and tell her that I heard what she said. I acknowledge what she said. Because when you do that, it's an exchange. It is. It's, it's going back and forth. Back and it's, forth. It's like so this. you're going back and forth between those two. And if you're doing that, you're going to find that you're going to be more effective in coming to an understanding of what the problem is, the root of the problem, but also how am I going to get past it? You know what? And I think it's just so important that I had to accept my responsibility right. in that scenario to say, you know what? I missed it. I didn't say, well, you know, what? this is another lesson. I'm going I'm to take a, <clears throat> a sidebar here for a second. I didn't say, well, you know, you bought too much stuff. And every time we got to move, if you got too much stuff, then that just makes it harder. I think you just need to stop. Yeah. Guess what? That is not the time for me to bring up something that she did. Right. You know, I had to learn this lesson. We, man, I don't know why we being so exposed to that. <laughs> That's what we're this doing. is this is one of those things where we had a we were young in our marriage. I'm I, I'm going to remember where we're at, where we had a situation where we were younger in our marriage, and Renee was come to me with a situation, something I that have, I did. I have a problem. She had a, a problem with something that I did, and she told me what it was. And then guess what I did? I broke out my tennis racket and I hit something right back at her about something she did that had nothing to do with what she brought up to me. And her response, instead of hitting it back at me, she said, Babe, 
if you have a problem with something that I did, then you should have brought it up initially. When I let's let's do this. When I come to you or you come to me with a concern, that you need to know that you can come to me with your concern, and I'm going to listen and I'm going to try to understand it. I'm not going to then deflect by then giving you my concern. So whoever comes with the concern has the table. So if I come and say I have a problem, that's not the time for you to tell me what your problem is because then you're dismissing my problem. And we still do that to this day. And guess what? When she said that, I was like, oh, okay. She's right. You know, that's... If there was a situation that come up, I could go back on the defensive. Again, if you remember what we talked about at the very beginning, we're in this together. We're in this relationship together. So we shouldn't be always in a mode of defending each other when we or have concerns or, or, or any of that because really in relationships and re you should always try to lose in order to win you got to lose the argument if you win the argument you lost because winning the argument meant you made it about you and not the other person and Gil is so good about always being the first to apologize and the first to accept responsibility and I appreciate that. And I think that's another thing about communication that has to be taken into consideration is your relationship with God. Because the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and self-control is not going to be something that comes natural. So a lot of the things that we're explaining and talking about in regards to communication is sifted through the fact that we are both believers. We are both mm -hmm. Christ followers. And Christ, being a Christ follower gives you a superpower because you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you saying, Hey, hey, chicky. No, that's not okay. That's that's it's not okay to do that. I want to give another example. Wait, but, but let me make one comment okay, sorry, about what you're saying about. So when when we go through those scenarios and those situations where we going back and forth and tit for tat and those types of things, nothing gets resolved. Nothing gets resolved. And yeah, you may lose the argument about what you're going through because you're focused on you being right instead of getting it right when it comes to the scenario. If you don't focus on resolving the issue, you're going to find that it's going to resurface just at a later time. It doesn't mean that you resolved it. And yeah, you may have won the, the initial battle right then and there. But guess what? It's going to come back up Yeah. later on because you didn't resolve it. The goal has actually always, the goal is always to resolve the issues that you have with each other or the scenario or the situation instead of just you saying your piece. If you're remembering all the things that we talked about, whether it's your communication style, and now all the things that we're talking about when it comes to the communication Tone process and, and volume, volume and all the non-verbal. If you kind of start practicing these things, it's going to become second nature to you're going to find that you're going to be resolving things a lot faster, a lot quicker, and more focused on what the real situation is. Yeah. Go ahead. You were going to make another I, point. I want to give it another example of... Uh, we always talk about don't talk when you're angry, hungry, tired, or lost. Well, the other night we had a, I got, I ordered, a, a, because when we travel, it's really hard to take a retractable banner. So I created this um, tablecloth with our picture on it and our information on it. And I was so excited about it. And um, <laughs> I know where she's going, but I'm going to let her finish. But go ahead. And so I was so excited about it. <laughs> and. Gil's personality is what you see. Gil is just calm. And so I said, babe, look, look at it, look at it. And he looked at it and he was like, oh, that's nice. Because normally if I show him something, I'm like, hey. I was like, babe, guess what? You know, look at it, look. And he was like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. And so I was like, oh, okay. And then I remembered, it's the end of the day. <laughs> this brother is probably sleepy. <laughs> so then I was My like. My wife loves to come and have these. Deep, these in moments at, at 10 30, 11 o'clock. And he go to bed at 10. I, I can't hang y'all. You can't. And so I, so then I have another issue because I was like, hey, would you help me fold this up? And so I had it in my mind the way it was supposed to be done because I'd already did it earlier with Eli. He helped me fold it. And so um, I had a, um, I had, I had a, uh, I'm just bringing up the signs that I, she's I saying had, it so I you know where issue. we're at. And so, um, I said, hey, baby, you help me fold this? And so he said, yeah. And so I was showing him how to do it. I was telling him how to do it. But I didn't really, I wasn't very, I wasn't using um, assertive speech. And so he was trying to help me. And so I just took it. 
I took it myself and I just did it myself. Well, she she just took it out of my hand, y'all. She didn't snatch it or anything yeah, like that. She just, just kind of removed it, got quiet, took it out of my hands and basically just started folding it herself. And we went back to a service speech. I said, babe, you didn't do that very well. You didn't communicate. You yet. didn't communicate very well right there. And she was like, she didn't say anything. And I explained to her what happened. She was doing this. She was active listening to what I was saying. So I was using assertive communication to explain to her why, because I said, instead of you telling me exactly what you need for me to do when it comes to folding this, you just took it out of my hands and you started folding it yourself. And I was like, I'm sorry. That was nonverbal. I said, I, I said, I'm sorry. So can I show you how I did it earlier? Because what I really want is for it to be folded so that our picture shows on there. Mm -hmm. But it's, I didn't say that. So I even just, though, so just imagine something that small folding up a sheet turns into tablecloth. A, a tablecloth turns into a full blown knockdown drag out conflict. And normally it's because that is a symptom. There have been so many other, there's been so many other areas where I didn't feel heard that that could have triggered something else. And so sometimes with the reason why it's important to talk things out and communicate and work through all this stuff is because whatever you don't talk out, you will act out. That could have ended up being a major thing, but because there's been so many other times when Gil has made me feel hurt, made me feel valuable, that that one incident was not the sum total of our relationship. And I was like, baby, you're right. I'm sorry. I should have just shown you exactly what I, that goes back to being a director. I just a direct communicator. I just direct, hey, let's fold this this way. And whereas Gil's a thinker, I should have been more detailed in and what she wanted. explaining what I wanted. But again, we go back to communication styles. Your communication style can be a hindrance when you're trying to do a task because Gil is really good at really detail oriented tasks and I'm not. And so it's just understanding that when you are interacting with another person, you have to take into consideration your communication style, you're taking communication tone, volume, body language, um, visual, visuals is your body language, you've written, you know, all those things have to be taken into consideration. And, and so, and this is all going on at one time. And so that's why it's in top, important to slow down and think about the elements of this when you're not in a conversation a yeah. or it's like being mindful of, okay, so I, I had to, this is what I had to do. With, I had to talk to myself. Okay, now, I know that you could communicate directly, but everybody...